Jews in your family. Uh, huh? You got yeah, you're right. In your yes, yes. You got peace in your family. You got in your family. Uh huh. That's only a few people caught that last one. Hold on, but I'm not. I'm not ready because I'm not. I'm not finished. You, you got adulterers in your family. You got fornicators in your family. You see, our problem as Adventists is that we look at homosexuals and we say, and then we let the adulterers go. Explain something to you. All of y'all are sinners. Yeah. I said, all of y'all are sinners. I already told you I'm a sinner, so I don't have to tell you. All of y'all are sinners. But the second thing that follows it is that you have to be saved by grace. By grace. This is the reason why when I got up and I said, Grace and mercy, my expectation is that you would have lost your minds. You should have been like, Grace? Oh, shoot. Grace? 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 You know what grace is? Grace is that you should have dropped dead this morning. Yes. And you think that your alarm clock woke you up to go to class. No, your alarm clock didn't wake you up. Put an alarm clock in the cemetery and see who wakes up. No, <laughs> yeah, you didn't wake up. You didn't wake up this morning. God sent an angel to pass by your bed. God sent an angel to nudge you. And when you woke up, he made sure that your blood started running through and that you could see in color. Now, those who might be blind, I'm sorry you don't fit that part of it. But I want you to understand that my God is an awesome God. Ah, uh, y'all didn't hear me. My God is an awesome God. So therefore, if God can do it, I can do it. I walk up to judges and tell the judges what I want. I get stopped by policemen. Now, I don't I'm worried about nothing. All this stuff about Ferguson and what's going on, nothing has changed. We had the same thing when that when what's his name got beaten 90 something. Rodney King. Ain't nothing different. And I was talking to a group of people and they were like, well, black people ought to walk this way and that way. And, you know, we people. And I walk my way, but is it isn't it crazy that I gotta say to my son, when you drive your mother's BMW. Yeah, my mother, my, his mother's. When you drive your mother's BMW and the cop stops you, put your hands on the wheel. Correct. Lights Listen on. to me carefully. I'm sorry I'm not on, on what we're talking about. Put your hands on the wheel. Hold it. Put everything on the dashboard. Call him sir. What I want to make sure, son, is that you come back home. Correct. Listen to me carefully. Many of our counterparts can't tell anybody their kids that, but we have to teach our kids that. I have to teach my, let me tell you, when I travel, Mervyn Warren, Dr. Mervyn Warren taught me this when I was in school. When I travel from interstate to interstate, I don't dress anyway. I'm in a pants, shirt, sometimes a tie when I drive. Because immediately what God gave me, they don't think I deserve. And many times, all right, now we'll go back to theology. Many times, I don't take out my license first. I take out my credentials first. Uh, y'all not, not hear me. I take out my credentials first and put it on the top. What frightens them, y'all didn't hear me, what frightens them is when they see ordained minister of the gospel. <laughs> see, y'all shout for other things. I'm trying to tell you that when that first piece of paper goes on top and the policeman looks at it, they see angels guarding my car. I'm talking about God here. I'm talking about serving a God that can do all things but fail. I'm talking about when somebody comes to rob me, I'm like, you can't do anything. I don't run. I stand there. I'm not a fool, but I, I stand there. First, first of all, let me explain something to you. Say to God, I'm not a fool. Amen. I'm working on my Christian life. Yes. I said I'm working on my Christian life. Yes. Come on, we got a little bit of time. Yes. So I'm not going to run because mm -hmm. I got mine too. You didn't hear me. I said I got mine too. I'm trying to get the Brooklyn out of me. Still in there. I'm trying to get the Brooklyn out of me. I'm trying to say, you ain't going to walk up on me and talk like, yo, let me get your money. You 
gonna take my wife's money from me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can't have this. <laughs> I gotta go home and pay for pay for more money from my friends. They took my they took it, they took your milk money. <laughs>
okay, after the second baby, then, then came a girl. <laughs> See me in the operating room, blowing her stomach, blowing her mouth. There's got to be a penis there, please. <laughs> Let me tell you something, as soon as I fucking was born to be a surprise, but I saw that it was a girl, and I was like, Jesus, save me, forgive me for everything that I've ever done, because when it comes around, goes around. So now she goes to TA, everywhere she go, I follow her around, huh? Wait, what? Huh? What? 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 Some guy look at her, they don't look at her. I check her phone. The boys too. But my baby girl? No, 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 I check her phone and we talk. I talk to my daughter. We talk. I'm like, I'm like, baby, daddy was a rolling stone. And I want you to understand that I got some of my daddy's blood in me. I'm getting serious about this thing. And I, and I got some of my grandfather's blood in me. So therefore, there might be some hotness in you. No, 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 no. That's what we have to do. Stop. Look. Start talking to your daughter. Daddy, I have feelings over here. And I said, you're supposed to. But lock that baby up. <laughs> then something happened with her and some guy. And I went down. Are we family? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I went down to the courthouse. Right? Mm -hmm. And I got a permit. Y'all, y'all gotta pray for me. I'm trying to make it to the kingdom. And I went to that little boy. And I said, little boy, I'm trying to make it to the kingdom. But the truth is that, <laughs> the truth is that, I give me like seven minutes. The truth is that my prayers now start to change. When you're single, your prayer is one way. When you have children, your prayers change. Yes. Before, when you were like, oh Lord, God, take care of me through the day, I'll be out and I'll be back. When you have children, you got a yellow pad. Lord, take care of her through step one, step two. Step three, destroy my enemies. <laughs> yeah. So rather quickly, I really went through depression. This is true. I was depressed because I couldn't serve God the way people wanted me to serve him. Say that. Let me tell you something. I don't want to big them up just for the sake of it. Just give me some time. Dr. Thompson. I don't know if you know him, he's sitting right here, one, two, three. Gave me a chance. Called me out of seminary when everybody was getting picked up and I wasn't. Gave me a chance at his church to be his associate pastor. When nobody wanted to pick me up, I had nine interviews and nobody touched me. That man gave me a chance. Praise the Lord. I didn't appreciate him when I got there. Because I knew everything. You didn't even know what I was going to talk about. I'm going to say it because you're here. I felt that this one year seminarian knew better than this man with 35 years of ministry. No, Doc, I didn't appreciate you. And then one day it was time for me to leave from under his wings. This is theology. Then I had to be out there on my own. And then I wanted to run back to him to say, please help me. The members are going to kill me. And I found that I started all over again just the way I started at home. And started ministry thinking it was all about me. It was all about standing up and having a silver tongue. 
It was all about standing up and making sure that nobody could out preach you. It was about standing up and making sure that, that you can save God and everybody will run down and everybody will come to God. And, every, and my pastor taught me that God has treasures that he built inside people of nothing. And when I learned that about God, I left from a state of depression. Can we just stick for just a second? And I went to a doctor because I was fainting all the time. And when I went to the doctor, the doctor said to me, and I said a therapist, the therapist said to me, you're trying to please everybody. They gave me Valium to take. That's a heavy drug. And then one day, I decided that I will no longer serve a seven-day Adventist God. But I'm going to serve my God. I will not, no longer serve my parents' God. I'm now going to serve my God. Listen to me carefully. Yes. And then my life changed. Oh, listen to me carefully, please, as I end this. My life changed because I was no longer afraid that when I go into the movie that I'm going to die in there. Yeah. Mm. Talk about it. No longer afraid that if I went to a club, my angels stood outside, because that's not true. I started to have a relationship with God where I wasn't worried about everything that I was doing wrong, but started thanking God for everything I was doing right. So I stopped preaching about jewelry, and stopped telling people they're going to go to hell for wearing jewelry. And stop telling people that their skirts are too high. I started to tell them, have a relationship with Jesus so that Jesus will tell you when your skirt's too high or when yes. you should stop wearing this and stop yeah. wearing that. My life became a little bit different because I'm no longer chastising anybody for how they're living, but now I'm introducing them to God, that God who changes lives. So there was this girl I used to go to school with here, and she left Adventism and she became a witch. She's still a witch. I put on Facebook that I'm going to open. She hit me up and she said, they don't know what's going on down there. I can guarantee if I walk in there, Satan will show her all the people that's already on his side. Now they hear She's a witch. She's chosen to be possessed by Satan. She said to me, when you have sex with each other, listen to me carefully, I'm telling you what she told me. That's how she, they pass demons from one person to the other. This might be my last time talking to you. I'm supposed to preach tomorrow morning. I don't know if I got that, but I want you to understand what this witch that used to be at Ventus told me. And if you want to change someone, you just have sex with them, and your fluids will change them, and their fluids will change you. Wow. That's the reason why they have orgies before they have seances, before they worship Satan. And now we're doing it. Forget sex. She told me that there's certain music I'm not preaching on it. There's certain music that's already have been set up simply to go into the Christian environment. She said they pray over it before it gets into our homes and before. She says when you leave your TV on, Satan works through the TV. When you leave it on at night and you go to sleep, he takes the opportunity to work through the TV and work through the music to change you while you sleep. I'm saying, girl, are you serious? So not only that, but we also put demons on clothing. When we go out there and we buy stuff, we take it home with us. Yo, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm trying to let you understand that this world is ridiculous. It's crazy. She's telling me that we are already overrun. She's a pastor's daughter. Mercy. She tells me that certain jewelry that we wear, we make wedding bands. 
got inscriptions on it that tells us, tell the devil, give the devil permission to come into our lives. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. She's telling me that even the pants and the stuff that guys are wearing now is not about it coming off here and we're all talking about underwear showing it. It's not about that anymore. It's about, y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? It's about promoting lesbianism and homosexuality, not because it's just a fad, it, it's to do it because you tell God his creation is not real. Somebody looking like, what do you mean? I'm trying to explain to you that the reason why homosexual behavior and lesbian behavior is so deep is because a lesbian, two women cannot make someone to praise God. Two men cannot make someone to praise God. So you can imagine in Sodom and Gomorrah that it ended up being that two people can't come together, so they're not even making babies anymore. So that means they're coming in the form of demons. If I had any wish for Oakwood, a university that I love, say something bad about Oakwood, and you're going to see niggerish come out of it. You know why? Because truly, I love this place. When I walk the grounds, I can smell the Holy Spirit. And guys, y'all don't hear me. I can smell the Holy Spirit. When I walk the grounds, I can see His wonders proclaimed. When I look at the dorms that they're building and all of that, I know now that Jesus is coming. Because he's going to make wonders. Just... So today, if you really want to live a changed life, it ain't about the person next to you. It ain't about what you thought, it ain't about the Sabbath school lesson. Matter of fact, Sabbath school lesson, as I said before, is not your devotion. Your devotion is your devotion. You sit in the closet and talk to God about how you are. And God has told me today that there are people who really, in this building, who really want to make a change. Not for you to ever come up here 20 years later and tell the story of how you are, what is that? It's about those of you who will never make the mistake. Somebody ought to say, amen, hallelujah. When you're in college, have fun. This is all you got. Because life is for real out there. Have fun here, now. Have your parties. I mean, your vegetarian parties. <laughs> say this because I don't know if I'm going to see you again. I don't know. If you get on a plane, they might land and not land properly. I can get in my car today and hit the road and Angela Battle. I know you're watching because you just hit, you hit me up before. Remember Angela Battle left out, car turned over, flipped through her outside the car, another car turned over on top of her. She got up and walked away. Yes. You know, I'm going to say it again. 
I want you to have a hand in dismantling. Yes. Now, I'm going to show you why Satan hates me. I like that he hates me. I said, I love it that he hates me. Because there's some Negroes here who was planning to be like me. The old me. Satan is a liar. Yes. I'll pray it out of you right now. Yes. Where you are, I'm pray you. Gentlemen, move now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. So we have the Tell Yes. I said to the grace of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah.